It's another OG Duffy versus. Again, this time we're looking at an arcade classic and it's the great Chase HQ. Uh, brilliant game. It was like a bit of a racer. You had a steering wheel, the pedals, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, but you're a cop car and you were chasing criminals down and you'd have to sort of bash them off the road. Now, loved it at the arcade. And when this come out on the home systems, again, Spectrum versus Commodore, we'll see which one wins this week. Again, it was highly, very well received. So we're gonna compare both games now on both systems and we'll see which one comes out the winner. So without further ado, let's get to it. So here we go, this was Chase HQ by Tay Show. Um, released in late 88 and uh, turned out to be an absolutely amazing game. Uh, what you do, you, you, it's a racer. So you're racing along, you're doing the obstacles, all that sort of thing, avoiding other car clashes and the rest of it, but you're chasing the criminal down. You had three turbo boosts you could use, you had high and low gears, and the turbo boost gave you a uh, three, you could use permission, and gave you a nice boost for about five seconds. So this is obviously the arcade version here, which was just brilliantly graphically etc um it was a massive hit in the arcade it went down really well around the globe uh won uh, won numerous awards um but this was just more than just a racing game i mean a typical racing game back then was you racing around just going around the track avoiding cars and obviously trying to get the greatest lap time this brought something different to the racing genre where you'd still have to race against the clock but you had a mission you had to go and destroy the enemy car by knocking them off the road and basically destroying them as you went featured lots of different levels and it wasn't dissimilar to outrun from 1986 in the style of play there um, Outrun was very well received and this, this did just as well and, and, and brought back more on it really. Um, and so it was released on numerous systems when it eventually came out for the home market. Um, consoles, home computers, the vast majority and it was literally uh, released a year later than we received it in the arcade. So it came out late 88 in the arcades and Christmas uh, 89. This pretty much topped the, uh, the charts at the time for its sales it was good and everyone of course wanted it for their home systems so now we have to ask ourselves how did the conversion compare obviously we can look at the commodore and the spectrum so without further ado let's head off now okay. and look at the spectrum You're conversion on suspicion of first degree murder there we go a great start there nice little comparison to the coin op so so far so good but let's get into the game let's see how it does Hold on, man. now as you heard there a brilliant bit of speech the Sinclair Spectrum always struggled when it comes to emulating speech for any reason. It was either very crass or very loud or very distorted. So a brilliant effort there, great start. As you can see, the maps and everything from the coin op version transpired and translated brilliantly to the ZX Spectrum. They copied them brilliantly. Um, the gameplay was very good. It was smooth, it ran well. It was not dissimilar to the, the coin op version. So they did a brilliant job of this. The sound effects, no music of course, but there wasn't in the original arcade. And uh, I think the sounds suited it very, very well. All the extra levels and stuff that were on the, uh, the coin op, the arcade version, translated well. This is a bit of a fault here. Bit of a color clash with the cars in the tunnel. But hey, we all know ZX Spectrum struggled with color clash at times. But this could not be faulted as a, um, a coin-op conversion. The gameplay was awesome. It just done everything it was meant to do. And very rarely back in the day did you ever play a coin-op conversion on a home computer system where it actually felt like you were playing the coin-op. But you know what? This did it, and it did it so, so well. The siren sounds, as you can hear, they were superb. Everything about it was really, really good. Now, back in the day, CMPG Magazine, Computer and Video Games, was the go-to for us home gamers, and they awarded this a brilliant 97% in its review. So, that's the ZX Spectrum out the starting blocks to compare. Let's see how the Commodore 64 did, shall we? 
So we've looked at the Spectrum, and now we have the mighty Commodore 64. Let's see how they compare. Now, this is obviously the opening screen section that we saw from the Spectrum. This is the C64 version. Now, is it just me, or does this seem a lot slower and dragged out? Um, here we go. We're getting into the game. And strangely, compared to the Spectrum version, as it begun, there was no speech on the C64, which struck me as a bit weird. I mean, if the Spectrum could pull off a bit of speech, I'm sure that the C64 could more than do so. I mean, the sound chip was greater and better on the Commodore, easily. You know, the SID chip, it was great. But yet, they made no use of it here. They didn't use music, rightly so, because there was none in the coin-op. But listen to them sounds. I don't know what you think, I just think they were just... They just did not make use of the SID chip at all. It just seemed to me a very rushed conversion. Now, if you look here, this is the sort of bit with the tumbleweeds and the signs. And this just doesn't compare to the Spectrum to me. I mean, I love both systems. I have both systems. But, like, the Commodore 64, it was well cheated on this. Here we go. This is the tunnel scene. No colour clash of the cars, though. So, you know, did well there, but... I'm struggling for positives and currently that's probably the only positive I can get. Uh, this is the end of level now, where you're getting the boss and obviously you have to smack his car until he sort of bursts into flames and all that and you use your turbo. But even the siren sound, I don't think is as good as the, com uh, the Spectrum version. And from Commodore you'd expect a lot more. I personally would. I mean, they had the SID chip for God's sake. It, it just not Spectrum into a cop tat. So what were they thinking here? Anyway, so there we go. That's uh, all three versions. Obviously, we showed the coin-op, the Spectrum, and that was the Commodore 64. Oh, CMVG gave this a massive 36. So, without further ado, let's go take a look at the verdict. But I think we know what's coming. Oh, dear. Should do better. Well, there we go. You've seen all the great gameplay from the arcade and uh, the efforts from Commodore and the effort from Spectrum. Now, I'm sure, you know, you can look at them and, and both systems are great home games and we've all got great memories. But I'm sorry, for me, Spectrum took this easily. They walked it, mate. They all over the Commodore on this one. Commodore didn't even have a chance in my mindset. But again, if you agree... Let me know. If you don't agree and you think, oh, I got it wrong, again, let me know in the comments. Opinions are great. And if you've got any suggestions for future versus videos or other ones I should look at and compare, please do so. Let me know. Okay, I've been OG Duffy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Okay, stay safe. Look after yourselves. Cheers. If you watch the video and you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe for more great videos. Thanks for watching.